Hello friends, this is for you if you're feeling frustrated or you can't find consistency in your work or results you get from publishing content. If you feel like you've tried everything but you just like kind of gave up or you just feel like, you know, you just don't know how to keep keep it moving. Uh, this we put together some clips from a recent weekly journal check-in that we do for our intensive content results and 30-day challenge program. And I think you'll find them very helpful and give, me, give you a little mindset shift. We do talk about, you know, the importance of publishing every day, even if you don't work every day. No one says you have to work every day. Uh, picking up, you know, where you are, like if you drop off in your, you know, working on your business, how to get back on it, we make and making new habits and what that really means and what it takes. Uh, also about not working so darn hard, rev leveraging the content you've been working so hard on. And also a little example of what will make your work so much more powerful. That's near the end, so be sure to watch it all. Business runs every single day, right? And it, it, um, so, you know, people are coming to check your content every day and they're, they are also, you know, buying every day. So we don't have to work every day. However, we should be publishing each day, putting out offers, making sure that, you know, things are, things continue to grow when we don't work. And then somebody, you know, was doing daily progress every single day. And then, uh, you know, something came up and they weren't able to do anything. Now, I don't know about the what was actually happening behind the scenes. But what I would say I did say to that person just as a as a as a as a thought, and for everybody else as well, is that just because you don't work, that day, like, you, you know, things happen, you might not be able to get your stuff done, you should be working ahead. So you should be, you know, planning to publish something somewhere every single day. Um, remember, we talked about doing something to grow your audience, doing something to sell your product, and doing something to connect personally with your audience every day. So that can be scheduled ahead of time. For me, I, you know, it varies and, and it depends kind of what mo working mode I'm in, but I am often working a week ahead, uh, sometimes two weeks ahead. If I'm going on vacation, I really push myself and get really far ahead. And then I give myself a buffer for when I come back from vacation of a couple of days, because I know I'm going to be tired. I'm not really going to feel like working. Uh, and so it's all done ahead of time. And that also means that, you know, when you're working ahead, that these unexpected things don't interrupt your flow your plan right we're not telling you specifically what to do each day you're creating the plan so yeah pick up from where we are now um actually i think just before you came in i did mention that we are gonna just keep it open we'll have sort of a graduates area and it's okay <laughs> If you didn't do it all, you could still be a graduate um and then you can keep checking in if you want and we'll run it again probably I, I, I'm hoping we could do it this year again, but it might be early in the new year, but it's all there for you. And the discord group will stay open for you to check in with. And if you've noticed anything about me is that I am very, I'm loose with the rules, but it's because all I want is you guys to build the consistency. So if you like, don't do it right away, I don't want you to go away and then give up. I want you to come back. Or if you, if you do it for a while and you fall off, then you're, you're still welcome to come back. It's not all lost, right? And that I think that's an important thing about developing these habits is if you fall off, don't let yourself fall off completely. You know, be kind to yourself, but then also push yourself to do to do some more. That. You know, what we really want is for you to develop good habits. And when you fall behind, that doesn't matter. If you're starting late, if you miss some, don't get discouraged. Just pick up where you are. I love Dr. Sue's approach. She's like, I'm going to do a 15 day challenge. That's great because that is the important thing when you're trying to develop any type of habit, really, is that 
well, even when you fall off or you don't start when you meant to, that you always come back to it, that you're kind enough to yourself to realize, okay, life gets in the way, life got in the way, but I'm going to get back on it. And the more you get back on it, the easier it's going to get. I give you like a story about like, for me, when it comes to developing a yoga practice, and it's the same type of thing. So when I first started doing yoga, I would go to the yoga studio and I would go quite a few times a week. And sometimes I do stuff at home and I, I had a, I had a good practice. It was back in before 2020. When, how many years of COVID has it been? Is it 2020? It ha- was 2020 or 2021? 2020 it started. Thank you. Gosh. Uh, so 2020 before then, and then COVID came and the yoga studio shut down and I always hated doing yoga at home. So it was thrown off for me. Um, I was sort of doing some online stuff with my studio, watching classes, but I have a heck of a time looking at a screen and trying to do it. And I'm like, oh gosh, I hate doing it. And I fell off. And then I started to feel bad. Like I don't, know if I have maybe perhaps, you know, some arthritis or something developing where I do have a lot of pain if I don't, I don't do the stretching. So if I needed to do it. So last year, after being really inconsistent, I just said, okay, I'm going to do 15 minutes of yoga every single day. And I was doing it on my own at home. And sometimes I would miss a day. And at the beginning, I would always force myself to make up the 15 minutes the next day. So it, I would do 30 minutes if I missed a day. And that was to, you know, let me know, okay, you can't, if you miss it, you got to make it up. <laughs> then I was getting good at doing that. So I extended it to 30 minutes and then the, the habit had developed, you know, after over a few months. So now when I skip a day, I don't beat myself up or I, and I never beat myself up. I just had to make it up. Now I don't have to make it up because I know I'm going to come back to it. So I don't know if that's useful too, like where you guys, if you miss a day, maybe you double up or, or, (laughs) and I know time schedules have, uh, you know, are important, but we're not talking about spending a whole lot of time doing stuff, you know, sending a message to your, to your mailing list. It doesn't have to be long. It can be short and sweet, but impactful you know social media posts stuff like that we're not talking about you having to do huge amounts of time some some parts of it are going to be time investments and that might be slower but I really found that though when I force myself to make it up to start uh it 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 did develop that habit and then I really started to enjoy it right I saw the benefits of it I love doing it I always did like doing it but I somehow did fall off um but it 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 got that back for me where I crave it where I'm looking for you know I want I want to make sure I carve out time in my day I also thought about what time of day at first I found if I didn't do it first thing in the morning I would often not do it at all or and now I still prefer the morning I know that I'm going to get it done but you know, think about that for you as well. Like, when do you need to get it done? Like, for me, I can't work late at night. Um, I find I'm not, I'm not, when I'm switching to the work topic, I find I can't work well late at night. My brain doesn't, you know, function as well. And I also find that I get so wired that I can't sleep. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about things too much. So I need to do my work earlier. And finish it earlier so that I can decompress, do the all the other things. Uh, the yoga in the morning helps me get my brain clear when I wake up and I'm like all foggy headed. And then I get into it and then I finish it and I go do the other things. If you can find that kind of routine for yourself too, I think that will, will help a lot. But that's great. Like, yeah, so you're doing a presentation, you're repurposing. I love hearing that. That is one thing that we should always be doing too. And like, that's what a lot of people might think too. Like, obviously we create a lot of content and I've created, but, but at the same time, sometimes it might look like we on a regular basis are creating a lot more than we are. It's just that we are keeping good inventories of what we have and reusing it, repurposing it all the time. 
And because we know that it, you know, new people come, people who have seen it, saw it before, didn't pay attention, or they need now need a reminder, but we always try to add a little bit extra to it. So maybe it's processed in a different way, or it's, it, it hits differently that they're gonna, that are gonna take action. But yeah, repurposing your content and keeping track of, you know, what you have is really important. We do that. I don't know if we've did we talk about it in the training too? I've mentioned it a lot of times before. Like we have spreadsheets, keep track of our blog posts, keep track of our um, our um, videos and stuff like that and reports, free offers, everything. We keep track of every, every product that we have for sale, every upsell, bump offer, every piece of content so that we can always find it. Sometimes we get a little lost because there's a lot and it's overwhelming too, but it's there, right? Like that we have this inventory that we can draw at at any time if we want to make a new blog post or if we want to take, uh, you know, put a few videos together or if we want to make a new product or we want to create a new upsell. Like we have kept track of all that stuff and it just builds so fast before you realize it too over a, a couple of years. It really does make a difference when you, you know, consciously try to to develop these habits and it's okay if they go at 30 miles per hour. I think that's perfect <laughs> because you don't yeah, want to do too much and then you no. don't, you end up like being frustrated and you just let it all go, right? Yeah, I did that for two years trying to launch the coaching and all these other different things. So I'm being a little bit more realistic, I hope, because I don't want to get frustrated and stop. Um, and every time uh, I get emails from you and I see what you're doing, I'm inspired. So I see what you're doing and it inspires me. It's a great role model. And just thank you for everything, the community and everything. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. All right. So I'll second have... that. That's a, can I just second that? Because you are inspiring. And um, I, I'm, I mean, you're just so open hearted and giving, you know, and, and I just, I really admire that. Thank you. And I, yeah, I feel like I can embrace it more and more. And I, it's always steered me well in business too, right? For these past 22 years is finding a way to be that open and giving person, but also, you know, build something great for myself. And I, I think that's one of the big lessons in the training was that, yeah, like you're, you're always educating and being helpful to people, even if they don't buy that day, because these people become your community, they come back for more and eventually do buy. They tell other people about you. Like it, it just really makes a difference. And I love listening to like Karen talking about, you know, when you're, you're going back to your social media accounts and trying to make things line up. I assume it's more that like to think, what is my big message? What do I want to put out in the world? And what it, that's going to attract the audience that you want. And this sounds wishy-washy, but it's true, right? It attracts the audience that loves you. And then when you're also excited about your products, you know, it's, it's, it all, it all works well together. And I think, think you were way ahead of the crowd though, with giving, because that wasn't normal years ago. It wasn't normal yeah. for, for uh, people, you know, marketers, you know, people in business to give stuff, a lot of stuff away. They just, you know, didn't do that. Yeah. I've been around a while and I, I can see the difference, you know, so you were ahead of the crew. <laughs> oh, thank you. I hope that gave you some good food for thought and maybe a new way of looking at it and making sure that you stay consistent.